All right, all right, all right. So moving on to healthcare for all. One of the things that I really like a lot. And look, Eric, if you swing the other way, this will be a way to get my draws down. <laughs> you said implement a United States national health care system. <laughs> okay, that was uncomfortable. But still, the sentiment is true. <laughs> this is after my own heart. Because I kept saying to many people, single health payer health care is now not good enough for me. I'm like, you know what? No, no, no. We're going farther. We're going to nationalize it all. All the way, baby. All the way, baby. <laughs> We're nationalizing the hospitals, the medical device companies. We're nationalizing pharma. We're nationalizing gyms. We're nationalizing. Uh, oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the name. Rehab facilities. All of it. Every single thing having to do with health, including holistic health. I don't care. The thing is, is that because if it's done for profit, that means somebody is going to suffer. Even with a single payer system, guess who still gets shafted? It's going to be the people collectively because these hospitals are going to raise their rates so fucking high that our taxes will eventually go up too. So no. They are not going to do it. We're going to do it in a way where it is actually cost-effective and not done for profit at all. So, yeah, and people are going to look at me like I'm crazy, especially a lot of people who are more prone I mean, to capitalism. What's next, JB? But... Are, are you going to want to want free fire department? You're crazy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy no, that, talk. That's that's a good point. I mean, that the free fire shirtless department fire free public school free next. Shirtless firefighters, oh boy. <laughs> free, sh free shirtless firefighters for all. Baby. <laughs> and, and I'm not. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. And for the straight guys, I'm not discriminating. <laughs> oh, there you go. That, now never it's mind. A party. Never mind. Uh, I, look, I, I look. I only kid because you know I try to have fun. But no, you're absolutely correct on this. It's like yeah, free firefighters like. Why are we, why is this something that is out of beyond the pale for people, mm. right? And, and one thing too is, is, I mean, first of all, I know I'm not telling the audience anything they don't agree with, but you know, healthcare for profit is just pure evil. One of the things that I think about is, is on this topic of protect the right to bodily autonomy and reproductive choice, what happens is healthcare insurance actively makes clinical decisions for the patients. Yes. Uh, a, a lot a lot of doctors are, are, are as frustrated with the system as possible because they will say all right i am the doctor this is my patient i am prescribing them this and the insurance company will say oh that doesn't fit in with our guidelines you know you you literally are having a health insurance uh, company make medical decisions for you taking it out of the hands of your doctor mm -hmm. and well, that is a look, major problem yeah you know how the Republicans, especially, kept talking about death panels. They literally exist. And they literally work for the healthcare insurance companies. They make choices based on what the information your doctor gives them. So let's say, for instance, your doctor saying, look, this procedure needs to be done. This procedure might be experimental but this is the best chance for you but they can't do it if the insurance company says you know what nah, no we're not gonna pay for that so then the insurance company just sentenced you to death or sentenced you to a life that is devoid of quality because they don't want to shell out the money because they actually get money by denying you care so with that being said, they do not deserve to exist at all because they're literally a barrier from you having good health. And so this is one of the reasons why I, I also am down for all this, you know, so. And so let, any, any strategy, any list of demands or any plan is going to have to deal with this in yeah. some fashion. And if. If, if a left strategy is to let it all burn down or, or say that, you know, the government, it's falling apart and there's nothing we can do about it. The, the problem with that, if, if that's where you're landing, is there's a whole lot of people 
and I've even I include myself who who depend on pharmaceutical products, depend on the medical system to literally survive. Mm-hmm. And if that goes down, you know, if we're into some post post war post whatever Mad Max world, there's a whole bunch of people that are just going to be gone in a few months. Mm-hmm. And so. You know, we, we need to have a plan, have a proposed solution and strategy that doesn't do that. <laughs> we, of course. We, we have to fix this thing. There, there, right. There's really no other choice or there's or there's millions of people who are just dead. Right. And that, that doesn't make for a good movement if that's your plan. <laughs> yep. Well, I, I just don't want people to think that that's the plan of a lot of us. Uh, if it has to go that far, is. Of course, there is has to be contingency set in place to safeguard as many people as possible. Uh, the thing is, is that there, the oligarchs will hold us hostage wherever possible. So we, have, I mean? we need the numbers. So it's, it's yes. our only chance. Yeah. So I just want to say that you know that's not you know I don't want to construe that that's what. A lot of us, you know, who are more revolutionary minded on the left, that's not what, you know, we're saying, you know, and that's not our goal, our aim or what is being proposed. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. Mm-hmm. Of course, the cover all aspects of healthcare, dental, vision, preventative, etc., including hospice care. I think hospice care also should be included in that as well. Hmm. So that's um, a good one to add. Another another thing is is uh, this is in general that I, I you know in, in general I support all education should be publicly funded and available to people. Uh, but it, but especially when you come to healthcare and, and to the law, um, I think a big problem is that you need to be privileged for the most part in this country to become a doctor, a lawyer. Uh, even a nurse. Uh, so th- what, what you have here is you have a certain group of people that are involved in these decision making processes. If you can open up uh, access for education, uh, you're, you're going to have a di- more diverse set of, of practitioners and more mm-hmm. ideas coming in here. And and I, I, I generally believe that that more diversity will lead to more, um, you know, revolutionary progressive ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is also a really good point, because a lot of the people who are involved in going into law or the medical field tend to be, I'm not saying at all, but tend to be people of a privileged class. And then even on top of that, some of them have to go into extreme amounts of debt, student debt in order to get to where they are. And call me crazy, but I'm of the opinion, all right, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let it hang out. I'm the other opinion not just tuition-free college and university, but tuition-free medical school, postgraduate, and law school. People look at me like I'm crazy for that. But to be honest with you, I think education is a right. And if you want to go to school to be a lawyer and attorney, I don't think you should have to suffer to do that. Or I think if you want to go and get all that education, but you still want to work with your hands as a carpenter, but you have all this knowledge of the law, okay, why is it gatekept? The law should not be gatekept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gatekept. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's yeah. even that that gatekeeping within a law. It's 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 a relatively new thing, and I, and I wonder even if the idea of law school was was put in there to to create the legal profession as being more unaccessible to certain groups of people, because historically that was not the case. Historically, becoming a lawyer was an apprenticeship. You would apprentice mm-hmm. under a lawyer, and after a certain period of time, you would take whatever exam and then you would be a lawyer there was no law school i think law yeah. school really became a thing more in like the 40s or the 50s well yeah there was a, a black man that was talked about he, he said you have to blame me for the bar exam because because i wanted to become a lawyer and they didn't want me as a black he was saying because they don't want me as a black man to become a lawyer then they created the bar exam so now you have to pass the bar in order to become a lawyer so really there was racist implications in creating the bar exam for lawyers this is why critical race theory is also very important kids oh um, yeah 
So, <laughs> so it yeah. is a big history of that. Straight up yeah. from the the voter voter tests after Emancipation Proclamation. Straight yeah. up to 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 gun control laws didn't yeah. exist until the Black Panthers peacefully protested with firearms outside of the California State Assembly. Yeah, that was what that was when gun laws came in. So yeah, I mean, there's a huge history of that, obviously. Definitely, definitely.